Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Steve coming back with another video. Um, not going to have anything really special today, but I just wanted to kind of um, let you kind of let you see what I've been working on. Now I mentioned about the machine language project before that I'm still serious about getting that going, whether it's going to be a demo or game, I don't know. And I'm still trying to talk to some people and see if I can gather some people. So far I've got a lot of the same people I've had before. But I'm hoping to attract newer people. Now also I'm going to put this out there for anybody who really wants to learn machine language too. You're welcome to join us too. I mean with Skype you can add up to 25 people and then basically it'll be a great opportunity for learning some skills in machine language and then as you're learning you can kind of insert your you know information or whatever in your knowledge. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you what I've been working on. Um, obviously what I'm doing is I'm going through some books even though some people have kind of disputed this already. I'm starting with this book right now, and I'm just kind of going through this one. Um, it's a pretty thick book, so I think it's got some pretty good material. It's um, written by, um, who is it? It says Douglas Maurer or whatever. And this book is probably old, I imagine. I don't know the year of it. It looks like it's um, 1985, so it's about right, right around the time when Comic 64 came out. Um, this is another one I'm kind of taking a look at too and just kind of examining it. I noticed this one's a little bit more. These Abascus books turned out to be a little bit better books and they give a little bit different, different information. Uh, I found this one pretty interesting too. There's a lot of interesting stuff here I could learn um, about different routines. And I think it's got a simulanguage examples in here and it's got some really interesting stuff about the hardware and just some memory addresses and stuff like that. Um, so this one I've already read. Um, I found a few things in here. It wasn't really a whole lot. It's mostly basic kind of stuff. And this one is an older book I have. I love this book. There's just so much good, a wealth of information. In it. I've used a lot of routines from it many times. This book tends to be a little bit too old for its time. I think it was written around like 1982 or something like that. And some of the stuff in here is pretty ancient. Even some of the, the way they code in it is kind of interesting. This one I found interesting even though it's... um kind of it looks like a, kind of a kid's guide. It, it does have some couple good routines in it. I found some good stuff here for character sets and I think there was some other stuff in there. But anyways, um, this one I really do like. This has a lot of good stuff in the intermediate. Look at the name Intermediate Commodore 64. And this one has a lot of great examples about sound. It's got some machine language listings and stuff like that. Um, this one is doesn't really have a lot of examples but in the back of this book what's really cool about this I think this was the book, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, there's spread throughout here. There's different machine language programs, but a lot of times they they give you the listings for them. Here's one such listing right there. You can kind of see that it's got you know the assembly language listings in the back of it. So I really like those kind of books. This one I found pretty interesting too. Machine language games. It's basically some games in here. Um, yeah, this one is this one's really really cool because. This one actually has all the source listings in the back for all of the games. I've used this in a lot of my examples and to help myself move forward and stuff like that. Um, this is an older book that I've already had. It's got um, basically machine language routines in it, but it, might, it just has some instruction sets in the back. If you look, it's got some pretty cool instruction sets and stuff I could refer to. But I don't really think it has any listings per se. Uh, mostly just um, the coding examples and you just type in enter the coding. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pause here for a minute. I'm going to show you what I'm working on on another perspective. Okay, so the other thing I've been doing is um, this is a game I've always admired. Um, ever since Bo showed me this game, I've been kind of obsessed over it. So what I've, I did is I've had the code on this computer for quite some time, and I finally decided to put it in a Word document. And I set it up so it's like in a little um, table here, and you can just basically click on any of these, and it'll take you instantly to... You have to hold the control key to shift you down, but it's taking instantly to that code section. So I kind of divided these up so whenever I'm going through and I need an example or something, let's say I needed to know something about rasters, I could go in here and I could kind of take a peek at stuff. And like I said, these are all the assembly, this is a, this should be the full assembly language listing. This is actually for Metal Warrior 6, but this example here is actually Metal Warrior 4, I believe. Um, it's not available on Tube. They don't have it uploaded on YouTube or anything. But anyways, if it's great. To learn from these examples, like I said, these are all machine language listings, and I'll just zoom in here to show you. You can see that these are all, this thing is just loaded with tons and tons of code. See, there's some examples right there. 
high score. There's so much more I could use. So when we're writing our routines, we can probably refer to, I'm going to refer to this a lot at least. Um, I'm probably upload it, you know, for other people and share it with other people. But there's just a lot of good stuff. It's really well documented too. I noticed too that this, um, this author, he does such a great job on his documenting of his code. So it's easy to kind of follow a lot of his logic. I mean, I've dealt with routines in the past where people have done poor documentation and you can't figure out what they're up to and what, what their routines are doing. I remember I had one routine many, many years ago that I looked at and it had no documentation. I was like, how in the world can anybody read this? And it was a really great game, but you couldn't read it. So I like that people do this. They take the time to kind of throw in some comments. It's very professional. It makes it easier for the next person to kind of learn from and, you know, move on from. So the next thing I was doing here is I was going through some other things online. And I, when I was actually, I'll go for this one, Lemon64, everybody probably knows about them. They're a great resource if you need to ask questions and get information. Sometimes you can look up and find good stuff in here. A lot of people who do their actual retro games and they sell them, they're, they advertise them on Limit 64. So sometimes you can ask them questions or you can kind of go into there. Um, I've actually put a lot of, you know, lists and posts up there before and I've gotten some pretty good responses from people. So what you do here is basically you just go to the, um, the forum. You just go up here to the top and you click on forum. And these are all the actual forums that they have. I, I like this one, the scene. You see it says C64 events, programming, graphics, and music, open discussions, and feel free to press for help. This is a great place, and a lot of times I find good code examples in here of people working on stuff. You can read reviews of stuff, and there's just a lot of great... This is probably the one of the most popular threads, I believe. But it's actually um, really interesting what you can find in here. Well, it's actually not the most popular. The most popular seems to be help and support. But, but anyways, um, good information. And while I was on there, I came across this, um, a Commodore Free magazine, which has been in publication for a long time, at least since like 2007. And it would probably take some time to kind of, you know, go through this and try to figure out what we need and stuff like that. But there's some good stuff in here, like articles and just different stuff. I mean, this is just an order issue here. But, you know, they're already, if I go back here a second, these are all the issues. I think this is everything. These are, this is everything they published to date. So this is at their main page here. So you've got downloads. You can download them, and then you can pull them up in PDF form, just like you saw earlier. So it's really, really a great resource, I think. And they, they load pretty fast too. Um, the other thing, of course, and the one and only is Bombjack. Bombjack has a lot of those books I showed you earlier on here, and plus they have some that I don't own. So and then if you just if you just first come to the page here at the top, you're gonna click on for machine language, you can click on machine language or semi language and it'll take you right down. It scrolls down to the page to that section and you can kind of see what they have in here. Um, so there's some really good ones in here. I know there's some in here by Jim Butterfield somewhere. I don't know where they are right now, but yeah, there's some great, great examples. Um, I found some good stuff in this one before. I used a lot of my, when I was doing that scrolling demo, I used a lot of them from this one. And of course, I own this book and I own this book. But there is some really good stuff. This one looks really interesting. I'm thinking about, you know, checking that one out. And a lot of these I already have downloaded to my computer. Um, this one is really interesting, too. Um, this one actually contains all the ROM listings. Let me just pull it up here a second see if I can open it. I should have just, let me pause here a second. So here it is had to wait for it to load there and I actually have a lot of these already on my computer too so semi language for the Commodore 64 and what's really cool about this is it actually has all the ROM dumps if you would call them the memory dumps actually I have to get past there's actually some good information at the top there but it's going to take a moment for all this to kind of go through they're toward the bottom here <coughs> And uh, make sure I got the right book here. And I'm pretty sure this is the book. I don't know why I'm having trouble finding them. But there are some, <clears throat> you can see some semi-language examples there. There's a lot of the memory dumps found in this book. So somewhere in here. I don't have time to look for them right now. But there's some great examples in there. And then there's just some good stuff in here. Some stuff for Vic64. Actually, this is the one I was looking for. 
the complete Commodore 64 ROM assembly. Okay, this is the one. Pull this up real quick. Let me see if I had it on here. I guess I'll just have to load it here. So this is the one I was talking about. This is um really, really good information in here. So if you need to kind of go through and try to figure out what certain routines are doing right here, these are all the dumps of the ROMs in uh, Commodore 64. So I found some really good information if I need to figure out what a routine is doing and what, you know, whether it's going to work for me or not. I use this book a lot, and that's just a great, great resource. Um, so I'm going to try to go through some more of these books. Uh, I've got some people disputing that, you know, books aren't the best way to do all this, but, you know, everybody look for their own self, you know, and I prefer, you know, reading books, and I'm also, you know, re um, re reverse engineering um, this M6 Meta Warrior 6, as somebody suggested, too. But at the same time, you can get information from all kinds of places, and obviously, um, we'll be using CBM PRG Studio. For those who are not familiar with it, um, you would want to get familiar with this because we'll be working in this a lot. So you'll want to know how to go in here. For example, and, you know, and add files and stuff like that. You can add simply files there. And basically how to open up. I think I might have an example on this one. Oh, I didn't actually. I just created this one the other day. So you'll want to be familiar with that, how to go through and just open up projects and stuff like that. I'm just going to go ahead and um, try to erase this one here. hit the wrong one here. And it's also got a help option there for people and stuff like that. Um, trying to... Okay, so what I need to do is I need to open up an existing project. I was losing myself here for a second. So you can go in here and you can open up examples. I don't know if I know any by heart where they're at right now, but these are just where I had a lot of my examples in the past and stuff like that. Um, let me see if I can pull one up here if it's going to work. Yeah, there's one right there. Um, so just like that, you'll have listings and you'll want to know how to go in here and, you know, write code and how to format and everything and stuff like that. And just, you know, understand um, how to put together programs and little routines and stuff like that. Like I said, even if you just know simple stuff and you think it might be helpful, let us know. If you're studying about numbers, I'd love to talk to you. Because I'm still trying to learn about the 16-bit math and all that myself. I mean, it just everything, anything could be beneficial. And plus, if you're watching us, you could be learning from it, whatever. Just be a contributor in some way. So that's pretty much where I wanted to kind of leave this video. Um, anything else, um, I'll keep researching and trying to find other resources, of course. You know, and oh, the only thing I was going to mention, um, I think I covered it up here. Well, I seem to be losing everything today, but anyways, here we go. So, this is my uh, Lodestar disk, and this one, with all of these other disks you see in the background here, these are all of my Lodestars, for example, if I pull one out here. They're all kind of stuck in there real tight. So, these are the Lodestar disks, and that is on the CD, essentially, basically. And... And the CD doesn't work so well, so I don't always use the CD, but the whole point I'm making is there's there's so much wealth of information on those disks, even from a machine language perspective, that if I had the CD working right now, I'd be able to, you know, use a lot of those examples. But my CD, fortunately, doesn't work very well. Sometimes it gets fast, sometimes it doesn't. So kind of hit or miss. If Once I get my Commodore 64 running and I get the, what I'm saving for, or what I'm waiting on getting is the ultimate 1541 Ultimate 2 um, from an order, but it's not going to be available to November, I found out. So yeah, something like that will be really helpful. And yeah, so that's basically what I wanted to show you in this example. I'm just um, excited about moving forward and just learning more and seeing what we can accomplish, you know, what we can build together. And like I said, more people looking for you. I'm also advertising on Twitter and stuff like that. And this is my uh, Twitter channel here. And, oh, I ran across some really good people here, too, and I was responding to one of these guys the other day. I think this was him right here. I think it was this guy. I ran across it. I found it on this webpage somewhere. Maybe I didn't set him as a follower. But this guy has written games already and stuff like that. And, you know, just kind of look through his stuff and see if there's anything that he's maybe mentioned about 
his code and stuff. He's got some pretty cool graphics and stuff like that. So, just stuff like that. Looking forward to graphic artists, you know, people who like to write, you know, create music or whatever. All of that, you know, looking forward to all these kind of people kind of coming together and willing to spend some time to just try to learn something. I mean, this is not for profit again right now. It's just to kind of get together and, you know, maybe you could start your own channel. Who knows? But anyways, I, I just want to say uh, thanks, guys. I really appreciate all the support and everything. And please like, favorite, subscribe, um, share this video with your friends. As always, look, looking forward to moving the next steps ahead, and we'll kind of go from there. Thanks for watching, guys.